Hi everyone, my name is Eric Ratamero. I work in the research IT department at the Jackson Laboratory, which is a nonprofit research institute based in Bar Harbor, Maine. Today I'm going to show you a little bit about how to generate a figure in Omero Figure, which is a tool for Omero. So first things first, I'm going to come here in Omero, I'm going to select a bunch of images. And I'm going to go here on the right hand side on this button that says open with. Um, and I'm going to choose a mirror figure. So that's going to open a new tab with all the images there. So what I'm going to do first is uh, I'm just going to show you that uh, I can select each individual image here. Uh, they are in separate panels and now they are misaligned. So if you want to realign them, you can select all of them, click this top right button that says align to grid and voila, they are in the grid now. So if you want to shrink all of them, you can just select all and shrink like that. They will keep the same size. So a few more things that you can do integrated like that when you have a bunch of images selected is for example, you can zoom in and out all of them. And by doing it with all of them selected, you are sure that you're zooming in by exactly the same amount and you can pan them around. And again, if you do with, with all of them selected, you are panning exactly the same amount. So now I'm going to select just one of them. I'm going to go to the labels tab here and I want to add a scale bar. Uh, if I press show, uh, it's not gonna show me anything. And that's because you see here that it says pixel size not set. So if you don't have a pixel size, then Omero doesn't have a way of knowing how big things are in your image. So we are going to set one manually in this case. Normally you don't need to do this because your metadata on your image files would already have that. So in this case, I'm going to choose 0 0.03 micrometers, which is 30 nanometers per pixel. So now if I press show, you'll see that it, it creates a scale bar that's way too big and it's bleeding through a bunch of images. So instead of 10 micrometers here, I'm going to say two, for example. Now I have something that's more manageable and I can choose where exactly that's going to be. So instead of bottom right, it can be on the top left, for example, and I can add a label if I want, for example. So now it says two micrometers there. So there are a few more things you can do in terms of labeling images. Uh, you can create uh, labels based on say, for example, the data set name. So let me choose a different image here and let's say data set name and I press add and it's going to add the data set name there. If you go back to the main Omero window, you're going to see that that's the name of the data set here. So if you have metadata or in your images, there's a lot of stuff you can do here. For example, channels and key value pairs and time and so on and so forth. So I, I will test uh, key value pairs just uh, so you can see. So key value pairs, again, if you go back to the main Omero uh, window here, they show up here on the right hand side. Uh, and in this case, I just added them manually. So this one, it just says time is 60 seconds. So now if I try to add a label based on key value pairs and I press add, it's going to ask me which key I actually want to add. Uh, and in this case, I just have one, which is just time. So I'm just gonna press okay. And you can't see anything. And that is because that thing is actually, you can see here the position, it's on the outside edge of the image on top. So it's actually under this image here. So I'm actually going to put it on the bottom and now you can see it's there. And of course you can change the font size and the color and so on and so forth. Okay, so for example, if you want to add uh, more images to this figure, in this case here, for example, I'm going to add these three images I have here. So what you can do is you select all of them and then you come here on the right hand side on this link button and you copy the text you get. Then you go back to figure, you click on add image and you paste that. And now they're going to show up here. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to shrink them. And in this case, I'm actually going to move this here because I want three different rows. So I'm going to select all of them and align to grid as I've, saw, I've shown before. And now I want to create multiple columns from these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Control C to copy and then Control V three times. And it's just going to do it nicely like that. 
I'm going to select all of them and I'm going to shrink them a little bit because they are outside the page. But now we have 12 panels. So I will do some adjustments per column. So you can see that each row is an individual image. So I'll have each column being a different aspect of that image. So in this case here, I'll have the first column be, I'll have just the first channel and I'm going to change the color to white. And then for the second row, the second column, I'll have just the second channel and I'm just going to keep it green for the moment. And then for the third column, I'll just have the third channel and I'm keeping it red for, for the moment. And for the last column, I'm going to keep all of them, but I'm going to adjust a little bit the brightness and contrast here. So you can change the minimum and maximum value for rendering settings. And there you go. You changed uh, brightness and contrast per channel here. Now, the same thing I showed you before still works here. So if I select all of the panels here, I can zoom in into one individual area and it's going to do that for all the panels. And same thing for panning. It's going to pan the same amount for all the, the panels. I'm going to go back to 100% zoom here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new column based on the last column here. So Control C, Control V again. And again, I'll have to adjust a little bit the size of these images. Uh, let's do it like this. No. Okay. I'm just going to move this guy a little bit out of the way so I can do this. There we go. Okay. So now I have shrunk all my panels by the same amount as we are used to now. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the last column be the same as the fourth column, but zoomed in on a specific bit. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a, a scale bar to this panel here. And in this case, we see that we have a pixel size already set on the metadata of the image. So I'm going to press show again. It's too big. So I'm going to shrink from 10 to say five. There we go. I'll put a label. And now I'm going to do the same thing for the fourth column here. I'm going to add five label. There we go. And you can see that in the fourth column, the scale bar is much smaller because it takes the zoom level into account and Omero already takes care of everything automatically for you. So a few more things you can do here. We can add labels based on the channels. So in this case here, for example, I can just press channels and add actually instead of putting on the top of the image i'm going to put on the top left inside corner and you see that it gives me in this case it's the wavelengths of each individual channel but that's essentially whatever you have set uh, as the channel names is going to appear here with the correct colors and everything okay so the last thing i'm going to show you is uh paper setup so you can go to file paper setup and i can increase the amount of pages in this figure by one. So now I have two pages and you see that I have two pages here and I'm going to add one extra image on this. So I'm going to go to this other data set and I'm going to again, copy the link to this one image here. And I'm going to do the same thing I did before, add image, paste, there we go. This is a really big image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom into one specific part so that it makes it it's less work for the computer to render it. But again, you have RGB in this case as the three channels and you added an extra image to your figure here. So finally, I'm going to save this and I'm going to export a PDF. So it takes a few seconds. It's essentially just going to render a PDF with everything you've done here up to now. And there it is. So I can download that PDF and it's gonna take a couple seconds to download. And there it is. It's a PDF with exactly the same thing we did. And an extra page here where you have a link to the figure and the link to each image that was used in that figure. So if you click one of those, you just go back to Omero to the exact image you just clicked. You see it highlights exactly which one that is. Another thing that happens when you generate a PDF is that it becomes an attachment to every image that was used in the PDF. So here you see that I have two different PDFs already because these were two different figures that I generated with this image. 
So that's a very quick overview of how to do uh, figures using Omero figure in Omero. So this is the first video on a series of videos we're going to be doing on some of, some tasks in Omero and outside Omero. So if you are interested, subscribe to the Jack's channel and I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching.